I went to art school, a very good art school here in Germany. And uh, I was learning for the first couple of years how to draw as a um, serious artist. So we didn't do cartoons or anything. We just went out in life drawings and we learned to draw circles by free hand or uh, ellipses. One of my professors came up to me and said, I want to see your personal stuff. Well, my personal stuff at that time was The Lord of the Rings because I had read the book and it completely blew me away. So I was doing the characters of Lord of the Rings just for my own fun. And I didn't show them in art school until I was active. And uh, what just had happened like a year before, like the year that I joined the school, Andrea Deja had left the same school and uh, he immediately went to Hollywood and uh, to work at Disney. On the, he immediately became a directing animator on uh, the Black Cauldron. And I, I hadn't heard of him. I had read of him in newspapers and uh, cinema magazines, but I, I had never met him. So what, what, what that did to our art school was that our teachers understood that animation is a serious profession. It's not just drawing Mickey Mouses. It's, it's very serious, and you can make a lot of money with it. And you get into newspapers, and you get into television. And so why does have an animation course at that school? And that course was run by Hans Bacher. And I joined that, and he wanted to do a comic strip with a duck. So he asked me to, to do that comic strip, and I did it together with Hans. And, and maybe I can, I can show you comic books with it. And uh, then we were asked to do a television series. So we did uh, 52 episodes for television. And that was in 1988 or something. And it was, it came out in 1990 and it was published worldwide, I think, except America, because there's no way to get on the American television market. I was doing storyboards for um, advertising agencies, just silly storyboards. And, uh, but through that, I came in touch with um, Richard Williams who was animating those storyboards in London. So we were meeting in Düsseldorf, and uh, the, Richard would do the, uh, the final uh, animation in London. And we, and Hans Bacher, and Uli Meyer, and lots of other German animators kind of became friends with uh, Richard Williams. So we started to visit him like once a year or twice a year. We went, we grabbed our pocket money and then we went to London to uh, look for videos and books and scripts and whatever we could get our hands on. And uh, then we would go and see Dick and just have a coffee and just have a look around at the studio or, or wherever, just have a chat. And uh, one of these time, it must have been around 60, uh, 86 or 87, um, we visited his studio on, on Soho Square in London, and uh, he said, guys, I just can't let you in. I got uh, Steven Fielder here sitting in my office and we're talking about a project. Mm -hmm. So uh, why don't you come back tomorrow? And then we came back tomorrow and it was the same thing, and we came back the day after that. And then uh, finally he let us in. And he found like a couple of minutes to talk to us. And uh, he, of course, that project was uh, Roger Rabbit. I thought that's not happening. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a joke. It's a dream. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I just make the decision now. It's, it's not really happening. And this is not really Steven Spielberg, and this is not really Bob Mackin, and it's. Uh, um, just do your job, you know, and this is one of the weasels that, that I did at, at the time. 
and we did way over a hundred of those. And then Jake and uh, Spielberg, they picked seven ones, seven ones, and then that became the final reason for uh, for the movie that we did for for the Toon Town sequence. And this is really a storyboard in the sense of storyboard. This is just concentrating on the story and on the gag. And we didn't pay any attention to how will they do this in animation. Uh, um, the live action part, the live action 2D mix and uh, doing stuff I, some, some of the stuff I did from Mulan, let me show you that. This is one of the ancestors. And so they asked me to work on Mushu. And you can only find a character if he's playing against another character. As a matter of fact, when we first thought there were two dragons. They were yin and yang. And uh, they later became one dragon. When it was time to, to go home, uh, we watched a Chinese movie about the, basically the same time that Mulan is taking place. And, but it was very, very brutal. And there was lots of head chopping and arm chopping and whatever. So before lunch, I uh, did sketches of those warriors based on that movie that we had just seen we as a joke, because I knew they, yeah, they, they sent me home and they said, would you like to do just all kinds of gorillas that you can think of for the next three months and send them over on a regular basis, let's say once a week. And uh, that's what I did. One of the most important things in character design is it's not just the drawing, it's the character. It's what, how does this character think? How does he feel? What is, what are his contradictions? What, how, what are his demons that he's fighting? And or his mannerisms? So where's the fun in the character? Where's the comedy in the character? Where are the, the contradictions? I mean, you can, uh, if you draw a gorilla, that, Looked like a gorilla, except they picked up and said that. That's boring. I basically uh, built Clayton on the image of uh, John Barrymore, English gentleman in the jungle. That was uh, that was my aim. And when I was studying Lion Decker. Uh, on the way to the final creation. And uh, the directors liked it very much. It's still over film. And uh, we can compare. Final, last but not least, this of course was uh, brought in by a new driver who did the voice. And she did a wonderful, wonderful voice for, uh, for Jane. And that actually put down the character. It's very helpful to get interested in just normal people, people on the streetcar, people you meet. It's difficult in Los Angeles, I know, because people just don't walk the street. That's when we get guests from Los Angeles, like Stephen Silver was here a couple of years ago, and it's totally different in Europe, and it's totally different in Hamburg or in Paris or whatever, where the streets are crowded with the most interesting people. And uh, that's a great subject to observe. And that's the, I think, the most.